Well, hello, George. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm really excited to talk to you. Great. Glad to be, glad to be with you. What can I do for you? Well, uh, it's really it's really an honor to speak with you. Uh, I have a tremendous respect for your accomplishments, your wealth of experience. And as a coach, I work with many small business owners. And I often hear the reasons that they're stuck, maybe in analysis paralysis, or they can't move forward, or they're afraid to have an acquisition, um, is because they don't have enough money, they don't have enough time, or they, they just have not enough knowledge. And so could you speak a little bit about the importance of resourcefulness or ways that people feel limited, how they can bring together a deal and negotiation or, or be able to move to that next level? Yeah, sure. That's it. First of all, you, you raise a very important point. And the first point is, is that everybody has strengths and they have weaknesses. We're ready to bring out and tell you here where I'm strong, but they won't, I don't, they don't look at their weaknesses. And that's where you need to help. If you can analyze and understand where you're weak, you can get help in that area. If you're lousy with, with figures and numbers, get an accountant or somebody that's good. If you're not aware of uh, what's involved in making a good real estate deal, get a broker or somebody who is. If you, if you don't know how to talk to people, get somebody who does. If you need coke, whatever. If you will understand your weaknesses, you can correct your weaknesses and that will help you. Now, part of what you're saying, especially with new entrepreneurs, they don't understand their weaknesses because they've never looked at them. So, uh, and it may, they never really analyzed their strengths. So if I said to you, what are you looking for? How much money do you have? How much are you gonna invest? Do you own your house? Do you have a mortgage? What, what do you, so what do you wanna be? And yeah, now, you, how old are you? You have to assume this is this point, I'm 35. Where do you wanna be when you're 70? What's your goal? What are you looking for now? So if I can analyze or get you to analyze what you have and what you do not have, we can work on what you don't have and how do we get that which you do have. And you'll find that you really know a lot more than you thought you did, but you never wrote it down. It's just a gut reaction. So a gut reaction is, I'd rather not do it because I could lose money, right? Okay, fine. Yeah, that's the way to look at it. How about looking at it the other way? Yeah, I wanna do it because I can make, I trust I can make money with the right advice. So if you look at it plus, it's like looking at, you know, the, the, the famous thing, is the glass half empty or half full? All right, whichever way you want to look at it. And most new, the, the new entrepreneurs or people in getting into it, they don't deal with the experts. If you don't deal with the experts, you're doomed for failure. Now you may be lucky. You may, can, may make one deal, two good deals at this point. You think I got it made. They don't have it made. You were lucky. But if you analyze what's going on and you have good, good advice from people that know what they're doing and the experts, yeah, you can stop a lot of the failures. But understand, you learn from failure. You do not learn from success. Because if you fail, you got that sick feeling in your pit of your stomach, said, what did I do wrong? And you figure out how not to do it again. When you're successful, you say, oh, I got magic. I got the magic touch. That's, that's nonsense. <laughs> In one instance you did, you did your analysis, it turned out to be fine, and you checked on your progress throughout the entire transaction. So if you do that, then fine. And each one should have a time frame. Every real estate transaction has a time frame. The time you get in and the time you're planning on getting out. And where you anticipate being during that entire frame. So now, so you should take a look at it. Where am I after one month, two months, five months, three months, and analyze? Am I, is it going in the right direction? Now, if you can live with the end result, as bad as it may be or what it is, then fine, do the deal because you'll probably do better than that, but you're not going to do worse. But you've analyzed and says my downside. Yeah, I put in a hundred thousand. The downside is I may lose six. I may lose sixty thousand. Okay. If you can live with the fact that you lose 60,000, do the deal and see how you're not gonna lose it. Now, what happens when you see you're gonna lose more than 60,000? Get out of the deal. But you, you, you're keeping in mind, in track, where you are at a point in time. 
And this is the, the key to any entrepreneur or good investor. Where are you at the point of time? Where do you want to be? In order to do that, you have to do some careful analysis. And what, what your lifestyle is, what your expenses are, do you have children, what do you, would you have a house, whatever it is. So I, what I've done for a number of, number of years, out of necessity really, because my father died at an early age and we, we were poor, or not dirt poor, but my brothers were in the army and I had no income and so I joined the army, but that's the past history. But I made up my mind early on while it was, when I was going to college, I said, I will never be poor again. Now, in order not to be poor again, I had to do two things. The first thing I had to do was write down, what is my income? And I put down, and then I said, what are my expenses? I put that down, whatever they may be. Now, what do you do at that point? So you subtract your expenses from your income. If you have nothing left over or it's minus, what do you have to do? I got to reduce the expenses or increase the income. All right, now, on the other hand, if I got more income than I got expenses, I got excess money I can do something with. Maybe I make investments or I do charity or whatever else it is. But I've got a handle on it. And when I write down expenses, they're legitimate expenses, not what I would like them to be. They are what they are. So if I like a new, I like a brand new car that's very expensive money-wise, I put it down. So right now, for example, at my age, I, I like to take vacations. I take the whole family. So when it comes down to vacations, I got $150,000 in expenses for vacations. Now, that's what I put down because that's what I intend to spend. That's part of it. Now, when I get down to the end, take the income, take the expenses, and with all of it, everything else, I now find out I got extra income. I provided trusts. I put a done everything, insurance, and taking care of my family, and make sure my wife has enough. At this, what do you do with the money? I give it to charity. But in order to do it, I had to figure out I had it. I'm satisfied with my lifestyle. A lot of people don't do that. It's unfortunate, but they don't do it. But that's that's the that's the key to really being a successful entrepreneur or in life. Know what you want to do and get a financial advisor. And you have to give the financial advisor all of the information It's exactly what we're talking about. Where do you want to be when you're seven? When do you retire? Where do you want to be? How's your health condition? How much do you spend in hospitalization? Have you provided for that? All of this can come out and good. Now you want to make investments. Do you want to take, you want income or do you want to take risk or a combination of both? can take risk as long as the reward is there. All right. This is a lot, this is heavy stuff for analysis, but in order to do that, what happens is now when you do it, you come out with a game plan that makes sense and you know where you are and you can talk to any advisor or anybody and say, good, here where I am. I want income property. We want income property, don't buy vacant land. I want secure income. All right, then I do residential. So you can decide where you want to be. That doesn't mean only residential, it means diversifications. So it may say, okay, I'll put 50% of the, my investment here, 20% there, whatever it is. So figure out where it is and take a risk. Yeah, sometimes you can take a flyer. And you take a flyer, yeah, <laughs> I have taken flyers. And I didn't, when I did flyer, I didn't want to get my money back. I wanted to make, 10 times my money in five years. So it's either nothing with five years, 10 times my money, but I didn't want to get my money back because I was taking the risk and it was a good risk. Whether it worked or not, it's not important. It was a calculated risk. It wasn't everything by any means. It was just what I thought was appropriate with money. I didn't care if I lost. I think that is the most important thing that you don't care that you lose it. I, a lot of times what I've noticed is People say they have a risk tolerance, but really they have a risk tolerance as long as they, they don't encounter that worst case downfall or the worst case scenario. That's correct. No, that's you, 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 you hit a, a, a nail right on the head, which I have problem, not problem, but I find that most investors or many investors will not accept it, especially those that are, have had business that's been in existence for years. And all of a sudden you have a downturn. 
And then they say, oh, well, business will be better next year. It's been, it's been in my family for 25 years, so it's a bad year. Without looking at what's going on in the industry. And say, you know, so, so when I talk to them, say, 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 sell. Well, I can't get anywhere near what it's worth. Sell. I don't care. Take out or get anything you can because it's only going to cost you more. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for them to let go because they're emotionally attached to it. And I'm looking at it purely from a, a coaching standpoint, from analysis, analyzing it. Now, if you don't think that happens, right? You know, if people don't do it, it is, I'll give you one name. Thank you. Did you take it? Kodak. Do you remember Kodak owned the film industry? It's not anymore. <laughs> and what happened to Kodak? Polaroid, right? Okay, what happened to Polaroid? Gone, digital. Digital, All right. right. <laughs> so now you look at Kodak, who was there and had an industry. Nobody was watching what was going on in the technology industry to say, hey, maybe we ought to get out of the film business. Now, that's a good entrepreneur, a good business purple, per person looks at where they are and what they can do with it, and maybe it's sell, or maybe it's merged, or maybe it's changed the whole line of thought. But at least you're aware of where you are and where you're going, and you get the emotion out of it. And, and know when to get out. I think knowing when to get out is where you're going with this, because if you're an industry that's in decline, that doesn't have an opportunity to transition, uh, or, or you've missed the buck on transition, knowing when to get out. I think that's a very, very hard um, skill set or, and, and thing to do. It, as it, it, it is, it's very difficult to do because it, you somehow say, that makes me a loser. It doesn't make you a loser. It makes you a winner. You had a, you had a situation that you couldn't control. You got out of it. Go on to the next, take your loss. It's hard to do that. The more money and the time you have involved in it, the harder it is. Next year will be better, when it, but the, the smart, successful entrepreneurs make the changes. Mm -hmm. So they now say, good, we'll do something else. We'll make a different product. Or I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do a different sales pitch, whatever. But we'll they'll take a different tack, avoiding what has already occurred. And you just recognizing it, that that business is going out. Now, you have this today. In the in very before the big box stores are going to be, are in trouble. Why? Because of the internet. People like to buy online, so they don't need the you don't need the big brick and mortar stores because people are not going to those stores. That means you shouldn't have them. No, but you don't need the whole the the big one. You don't don't need what 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 you had before because the market has changed. So now what do you have to do? I got to change my marketing. I got to go now get involved with uh, with with uh, online sales and I have to change the sales pitch and I have to change the people that answer the phone when you call me online because I'm not there on the store so it's a change of for a lot philosophy to take to take account what is going on at the time and that's the key to being successful in any business or any investment am I taking advantage of what's going on at the time or what I think is going to go on at the time if I think it's going to decline, I'm taking it kind of down to decline. If I think it's going to go up, am I gearing for the up? That's pre-planning. Absolutely. Most people don't want to do it, do it. They say, I'll see what happens. Good. You see what happens when you go broke. Or it's too late to do anything. Absolutely. So, so George, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more, you know, um, when you're, when you're looking at that and, and a, right now, a lot of people have found themselves in that situation. We've accelerated technology in the last year um, and, and the future of work is changing. And so if we find ourselves caught and we haven't quite adapted yet, um, knowing how to pivot, knowing what to do and knowing if it's time to let go, having the right coach or mentor is, is critical to that. So what would you say about finding a coach? How do you find the right coach and the right mentor for you? What's their what's your weakness? What's your weakness? My weakness is I, I, I'm not healthy. Good. Get a health coach. All right. I'm weakness when it comes to dollars or investments, get a financial coach. I'm want to, I want to get invested in real estate, get a real estate coach. You know, deal with the coach that's got expertise in the area that you need. 
don't deal with your brother-in-law or don't deal with somebody that's, that's in, an, in a similar field or, not, or dabbles in it. Get somebody who's really early into it and can help you. And that's worthwhile. I don't care what you pay for it. It's worth it. So you have to know who the coach is, what the background and the experience, and if it's there. If not, don't take my, my I, good, I got a friend that says they got this coach and they made, they made him do a deal and they made a lot, of, a lot of money. They tripled their money in two years. At this, is that the coach you need? I don't know. I got to find more about it. That's unusual. If that's the only thing they've got, they've got is credentials, I don't want them. So get the right coach. Yeah, absolutely. I concur with you. And, and so you, you also mentioned something that I found really amusing because it, it occurred a lot. Oh, my uncle told me not to do this deal because X, Y, Z, but my uncle isn't actually in real estate, for example. Um, how many, and, and I'm really curious about this because uh, some of the deals that we have tried to, to, to push forth have walked away and we have left the table because they looked at their family and their family last minute said that it could be done a different way. Um, a, <laughs> so the kid, first thing is don't take advice from your family. Okay, that's what, don't deal with your family because that's where the problem is called. Don't take, don't, if you're in a family business, you got one major, there's a problem right away at this because you're gonna have disputes. You see it differently. So, and deal with someone who's got the expert in the area not so he says that's good. I mean, I've had a, a transaction with people. I wouldn't go into that at this point. If I couldn't get my, my property back at the end of the lease, I don't want it. And they say, well, fine, that's, that's not part of this deal. So I can make you part of a bigger deal or give you, broaden your horizons to learn something new. If you have someone who's flexible, they're going to be successful. If they're inflexible, they're going to fail sooner or later. They may not fail, but they don't get the most out of the transactions because they, they're not thinking far enough ahead. Hmm. And, and is there something that you would, would recommend as far as learning how to think far enough ahead, how to see three, four, five, seven, seven steps ahead for someone who isn't accustomed to using that muscle, so to speak? Yeah, get, get somebody who is. Get somebody who's, who's following their trends. So now if I want to, if I'm interested in buying a, a, a residential, residential buildings for uh, senior citizens, I want to know what's going on. What's the, what's the community? What's the, how, what's the, is it aging? Does the, the senior citizens, how much income do they have to spend on housing? Is it a little, is it a lot? Because then if it's little, I got to build something that's one level. If it's affluent, I build it on a different level. So you see the trends. You're going, and you won't, if you can analyze and, and, and a trend and take advantage of the trend, you're successful. If you wait until the trend is established, you're too late. Now it's already been filled up. How many times have people looked at it? Gee, that was a great idea. I wish I had done it. I wish I had done it. Yeah, okay, fine. Why didn't you? I didn't have the courage or I didn't have the information, I didn't have the background, but yeah, it was good. I thought that would work. That's, that's most of it. Yeah, I, I thought it would, but I never did it. So people have to understand, and one of the keys is you learn from failure. You do not learn from success. Because if you fail, then you, then you look, you go back, you say, well, why did I do it? You get that sick feeling in the pit of your stomach that I did something wrong, and you don't want to do it again. If you're successful, you say, oh, I got the magic touch nonsense. You were lucky. Or you made an appropriate analysis. That's fine. So now what you say, so you learn from you, so don't be afraid. But if you didn't fail, you could never succeed. So you're not gonna go forward. You have, to be, you have to be, look at it, analyze it and say, yes, all things considered, I think this is the right thing to do at this time. And I'm gonna watch it to see if I made a mistake. Because if I made a mistake, I'm gonna do something about the mistake as quickly as I can. And I see I missed, I made a mistake. I love it. George, I have, a, I, have a, I have a question that I ask a lot of people that I've interviewed, a lot of my coaches and mentors, and it's, if you had it to do over again, and you could give yourself one piece of advice of everything that you've learned in, in all of your negotiations and all of your vast experience, if you could go back and tell that, you know, 18-year-old version of you one piece of advice, what would it be? Don't deal with relatives. 
<laughs> deal with independent deal with independent parties at this the ones that you can tell them to go fly a kite if you want to and keep pretty still in the family you deal with relatives you have a tendency to either take their advice or not take their advice if you took their advice it works good say oh that's wonderful and if it goes bad you can't really say you gave me bad advice no you have to stand on your own two feet don't deal with relatives deal with people you can trust and if you're dealing with somebody and you find out that they're not truthful get rid of them there is no you can never deal with a thief and you'll find out the thief is, many of them it's a question of price if there's a little involved i'm totally honest on the other hand put a lot of money on the table that i could make and if i did something a little different they'll, they'll go for the money so we understand the weaknesses and the strengths of the people you're dealing with so if you can analyze them you're fine so would i do it again no that's a learning experience if you get stuck with a bad employee fire him, him or her Simple as that. You may say, well, I can't. They're my business. They're not your business. You're spending more time watching them than you're watching your business. So it's it's being able to analyze people, being able to uh, effectively delegate authority and build all, all of that. So would it said, what would, if I had to do it over again, what would I do? Nothing. Nothing different. Because I with what the information I had, I did what I thought was right. Sometimes it didn't work out the way I had in mind, but most of the times it did. All you need in life is more wins than losses. You'll be fine. I think that's very sage advice. I really appreciate that. It's been an absolute pleasure to ask you these questions. Um, and uh, I know, I know that you have so much to offer. Uh, I've read your books. I really do enjoy every time that you speak. I, I've watched several, um, several instances yeah. with JT and otherwise. And and you're just always have an even keel and an even like. A lot of people get emotional when they speak about certain things. You just always have that calm, collected, and and just stage advice. I really appreciate I your. I understand emotion doesn't doesn't get doesn't solve anything. The only time I get in motion is if emotions will work. So now if you're gonna if the only way you listen to me is for me to yell, I'll yell. All right. If on the other way, the only way you listen to me is for me to talk quietly, I'll talk quietly. But that's only so that you, I'm getting your attention. It's not what I'm saying. You want to be successful in life when you're dealing with people. Learn one, learn this. Listen to what they are not saying, not what they are saying because what they're not saying is where they really are. Read between the lines. You got it. Absolutely a pleasure. And is there anything else that if you, if you could just say, give, give a quick two minutes, Hey, this is the, this is the most important thing. This is where the future is going or what you see um, from where we are today in the next 18 months. What's what's in your looking glass? Your, I guess your in the next 18 months, I would say fine. That's easy. Technology. The technology is changing so fast. There's so much going on that, that there's just scratching the surface with when you talk to AI and artificial intelligence and all that. So any business, business person say, I don't care what the business is, you must be up on the technology and what's going on so that it gives you information when you need it in the form that you need it and you're dealing with professionals that are doing and that have the technology so they give you the answers that you need when you need them. So this most site was too expensive. All right, or in fact at this late, how, what are we an iPhone 10? What the hell happened <laughs> an iPhone 7? You understand what I'm saying? Changes. So if you're aware of it and it affects any business, so it affects coaching, it affects every business, ever, to be aware of what's going on in the industry. Now look at the different, look at the way we're saying now we're, we're on a Zoom call, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, if we didn't have a, if we didn't have the pandemic, would we have Zoom calls? No, not in the same way. It was there, but it was not something that everybody was looking at saying how it is. Now take any business, all of a sudden say, what? I don't need my people in the, in the, in the office at, at the same time. I don't need 30,000 square feet of office space. I can have half of my people working from home and we'll do Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. And we'll be flat. You get 10 competitors with Zoom that are better doing something else. So if you're aware of the technology and are up to it, you're going to be successful in business. If you're not, you're going to be left behind. 
I love it. I completely concur with you. And, and it's funny because I was on Zoom for three or four years and it was really a challenge to have people to meet virtually. Um, and everybody wanted to insist on in-person. And now that some places are opening up, people have realized that they actually prefer the Zoom because they don't have to travel anywhere. They don't have to feel unsafe in any kind of situation. They don't have any unknowns. They know that they can log in and they can talk just like we are today. Um, well, that, that, that's, that's true, but you have to understand that, that there are pitfalls too or there are shortcomings. In, short, in, uh, in Zoom, you don't get a chance for body language. Yeah. So now we can see, yeah, we can see face to face, but I still don't see some of the body language. Oh, you're not. And I noticed right now, just look at you're looking looking down. I don't know what you're looking at. Oh, I'm writing notes. No, no, I no, 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 no. I'm not saying at this point. But the difference is, if we were face to face, I could see what you're doing. So there's an advantage to being a personal. Also, questions may come up. So in other words, I right, so now look look at this. We said you're looking down, and I said I don't know. You look. He said I got a pen. Pen. So you, you answered the question because I raised the question. I wouldn't have raised the question if I was in person. You're right. You're absolutely right. I, I would have seen it and I could have made an assumption. Well, she is writing down basically we're talking, which means she's interested in what I'm saying because otherwise you wouldn't write it down unless I look over and you're doodling in which case this is not interesting. So you lose part of the person to person contact when you're on the Zoom or the others. But what you do gain is now you, know, you have the, the ease of facility that I can be thousands of miles apart in different time zones and we can communicate at a time that's convenient for both of us where we don't need it. So everything in life has pluses and minuses. You're absolutely right. Thank you so much for that, George. And I really appreciate your time. I know that we are, we are due to be ending. So um, I'm sure Tracy's going to pop back in on us. I, I appreciate everything that you have given today um, and everything that you've done, because I do, I do consider you quite a mentor. That's it. I, that's the same to these, Mitch. That's, that's, that's what I find very interesting, very exciting for, exciting for me, although at my age, I don't get exciting that easy. But what I'm saying is, yes, the, what I, I do this is I say, I have been where you are. You have not been where I am. Why not? give to you or to others that want it the benefit of all of my experience in business and in, in life and whatever it is so that you can make it easier. It's much more difficult for you now than it was when I was your age because of the technology. Everything's gone fast. It's different. Mm -hmm. And therefore you didn't have uh, cell phones. You didn't have emails. We didn't have all of that stuff. So now you have a different world. It's a different thing and you have to adapt to it. And I recognize that it's difficult. And if I say, is there some way I can make it easier? Why not? I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, your time is very valuable. And, uh, and I've learned so much from you and from others. I, I really do value mentorship. I think that also okay. JT says that all coaches need coaches. And right. it's, it's so true because that's what helps us collapse the time and really, really elevate ourselves. If we're not growing, we're dying at this point in time. You got it. Absolutely right. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Be well. Absolutely a pleasure to talk to you as well. Have an amazing rest of your day and stay Thank healthy. You, you too. Good Easter. Jake, can we finish there?